Hello everybody, Chris here, and welcome to my Operation Twin Shells recap. If you're looking for just a video of the upcoming stuff in a simple matter for the new season, then you've come to the right place. So getting straight into it, Operation Twin Shells will release on September 10th on the main build of Siege, and it will be on the test server starting today, August 26th. So the main focus of the season is Skopos, who is the new defending Greek operator, and what is actually great about them is that they are a character from the previous Rainbow Six games. Her name is Kyrie Galanos and has appeared in the 1999 game Rainbow Six Rogue Spear and the 2003 game Rainbow Six Three Ravenshield. In a previous animation that was released earlier this year with Operation Deadly Omen, after that big explosion, it was revealed that she lost her legs in that big explosion. She still wanted to help out in Rainbow and thus developed two of her robot counterparts, Talos and Colossus. Now how these robots work is that you can switch between back and forth in which one of the robots goes idle behind a shield whilst you play and control the other one. And you can view the idle robot too as kind of like a bulletproof camera, of course still being destroyed by explosives or being hacked by Dokubi and Brava as well. Now to clarify on this, since some people are still concerned from what I've seen, once you kill one of these robots, that's it. You die for the rest of the round because it severs a link in Scopos' line and therefore no two lives, only just one. <laughs> now these robots are 2 speed, 2 armor. And for their loadout, we actually have a new assault rifle, the PCX-33 assault rifle with the P229 pistol secondary. And as for their secondary gadgets, they get two impacts and two proximity alarms. And notice too how they only have one primary and one secondary. Now moving on to some balancing stuff, we head into the second part of Solace's nerf. Now if you don't remember the first part of this nerf, it was earlier in New Blood, in which she couldn't scan drones during the prep phase and a tiny bit more. But for the second change, it's more focused on the resources of her gadget. Now as Ubisoft puts it, there are three pillars for these changes, with the first pillar being the detection, as now instead of the entire screen being the detection area, only the center of the screen will detect enemy gadgets. But on top of that too, their identity will be hidden as well. As for the second pillar, the scanning mechanic is the big one, where it is now the overclock feature in which it is activated, the energy for the gadget will be refilled but it cannot be stopped once it's being used. And once it's activated, all observation tools like drones will be alerted that she is in range of them, and also allows Solace players to use the overclock mode at the right time. Now as for the third pillar, they are looking at reverting some of the new blood changes that were made to her, in which they are limiting some of the power for her gadget to boost the minimum energy required to access it during the round. Now as for Dokubi's update this season, she will start the round with zero calls and it will charge up during the round every 45 seconds, but you only get two calls a round. And whilst I can understand where they're coming from, this seems like kind of a strange change, but I feel like it's going to be one that we're going to get more used to as we get to try it out. And lastly, Nox change is based on her ability, in which it will be action based, so if you're shooting, running, jumping, or some sort, that's when her gadget will be used. So when you're standing, for instance, it won't use the energy for the gadget, so therefore this is really a nice change to see, and the FMG9 as well is getting a buff as well, recoil wise, so that's really good to see as well. Now for some gadget changes that weren't mentioned in the reveal panel, but the designer notes, Claymore's and proximity alarms are getting small tweaks, as is the R4C. <laughs> for Claymore's, they are removing the delay between activation and explosion, so therefore it activates faster now. And for proximity alarms, they are removing the scoring award that is triggered once the enemy alerts it, to prevent it from being known by the defender. And as for the R4C, they are reducing the magazine from 30 to 25 bullets. Now moving on to some features that will interest some people. Firstly, the Siege Cup is releasing this season but only on PC for the time being, as it's going to be in beta for the North American and Europe regions. And what this is, it's basically an in-game tournament feature to offer those who want to be a little more competitive, a way to go up against others and earn some good rewards to playing. To also add on to this, this will be in beta for this season, but we'll also see a full launch next season, so be on the lookout for that. Drones will now have a boost to them, in which it looks like you're in an anime with the speed lines, but you can only do it three times per round, and besides regular drones, you can do it on Echo Drones too, but not Brava or Flores drones though. 
The shooting range will be accessible during matchmaking now, something I myself will enjoy a lot considering this has been long overdue, and as it says you can access this during the queue for a ranked match, casual match, stuff like that, or even waiting for a siege cup match to start, which is very nice. Versus AI is now having attackers added, so now you can finally play on the defender side versus a full side of attackers. Very nice to see that they're still building upon this concept a lot. Some may not like it, which is understandable, but at the same time, it's really nice to see. On the topic of this, map training will be getting a few more maps, along with shooting range getting a new cover lane if you're interested in that. We will have a new after action report screen, something that looks like what you're seeing on the screen right now. And honestly, this looks much, much better, much smoother, much organized to see, you know, your stats, alpha pack stuff, commending people, thankfully, and also seeing your skins too and other people's skins. It's very nice. And lastly, a 1v1 preset is being added into the custom playlist, so therefore you can easily do those instead of fiddling with the many settings and custom games just to set up a match. And that is all for the recap, folks. It may not seem like a lot for this season, but I think once we all get to try it out on the test server today, it'll be good for sure. And in all honesty too, I think after New Blood, this will be a decent season, probably even a fun one. I'm just really happy that we're getting something new and honestly unique after what we've been through with this season. <laughs> if you all enjoyed this recap and found it useful, any form of support is appreciated. And with that, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the new season. Take care, everyone.